Well, that's new. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Troglis Guitar Show. We've got a traditional unboxing episode for today, but we're going to start with this interesting one. I bought a guitar from a viewer of the show who lives in Australia, and it looks like this one got security checked by DHL. I'm not sure if that's customs, or they might have went up here and went, oh, that's one of those 20k greenies. Let me open that up on my customs lunch break and take it for a test ride. But then, plot twist for Mr. Sushi. <laughs> it's an Adam Jones, which is sure to upset any burst lover out there. There's actually kind of an interesting story behind this. I didn't figure enough time has passed to re-review this guitar, but I actually have owned this one before. I help people get guitars all over the world via my forwarding service, and it's honestly something I really enjoy doing. Talking to people from other countries, and we have like a common interest, and I love being that guy that helps them get something that they couldn't obtain otherwise. The story on this one was he initially wanted the age signed, and I had a pre-order with Musician's Friend for such a long time. And it was confirmed, so I promised him this other one that was coming in, and we ended up waiting and waiting and waiting to the point where I didn't think it was going to still come in, but I was still being reassured it would. And then eventually uh, they'd cancel the order on us, and we're like, oh, we're in an awkward situation now. So if I remember correctly, what we did is I sourced him this used VOS, and then we got him another guitar on top of that, and that was the end of this tale. So I saw this thing show up on Reverb, and then eventually got a price drop, so I thought, eh, let's go ahead and throw an offer in, and then lo and behold, yeah, <laughs> it's the same one. This is the original VOS run, number 43. But uh-oh, let this be a warning to you guys. Use cloth coverings on your stands. I don't care if they say they're nitro safe or not. <laughs> Just do it as a precaution, because right there we've got a red stand blemish. Probably one of those A-frame stands, and then I don't know how one got there. Or perhaps that's a backer on his stand, because you also have some along the edge here. Now, being a Trogley's viewer, he was very upfront about that, so I didn't care. And we've still got all our other goodies in the case. But oh, apparently this is one of the Japanese market ones. So if you're in the market for an original run Adam Jones VOS, feel free to let me know, as I will be putting this one up for sale, because the time is not right to keep one of these. We've got that expensive purchase coming up, remember? But before we continue unboxing some stuff tonight, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Sweetwater. Sweetwater is a great place to buy new gear. From electric guitars, to pianos, to even the orchestral instruments, they have many a different ones to choose. One of my favorite things about Sweetwater when you're buying a guitar is the fact that they show you all the different tops, all the different weights, even the serial numbers. You can choose your exact guitar before they ship it to you. And by they, I mean your personal dedicated sales engineer that's going to call up and check on you, not just after the sale, but many a months down the line as well. They want to build a relationship with you. And currently, they're having a January clearance event if you'd like to check out what is on sale. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring tonight's episode. Now let's get back to my content. Package number two might look like a guitar, but inside here is actually not a guitar at all. Cool. There was a free sock in this one. At least it's clean. <laughs> But inside the mummification, I've got an SG case here. It's just a regular case. I pick it up because you always need an SG case and you can't find them. But wait a minute, this one's different. Whose signature is that? It's a Captain Kirk Douglas first run case. I didn't even realize those things had special cases because I haven't reviewed one yet. So this one popped up for sale on Reverb. And as I said, I just like having SG cases laying around because there's a lot of cool SG models that did not initially ship with them or they don't actually come to me with a case. So the fact that it's a signature one, that's just kind of cool. So if you have a first run Captain Kirk Douglas and you can prove to me you are missing your case, I will sell it to you. Otherwise, I, th I think I'm just going to hold on to it because it actually appears to be in pretty decent condition for one of these and i suppose i'll just keep that in there but now it is mail time what is in our first box this pile's been sitting a long time because i've been waiting for the next time i record an unboxing episode so i'm not even sure it appears to be a set of pickups so we've got the patent number on the back so that could tell us it's a t-top or a tim shaw we'd have to look a little bit further such as our brass screws and if we were to take the covers off we could see bobbin colors but we've got a little bit of wear on the edge of that i think these were advertised to me as 86 tim shaws and i would agree with that because he had said it came out of like a les paul standard you always need these things for like restoring prehistorics so i'll put those in my parch drawer for a rainy day but i do have a couple of tim shaw sets available on reverb if anyone is interested first one measures 7.42 and the other 7.37 so yeah that definitely lines up 
This next one is actually a gift from a viewer of the show. Manu from Spain. He saw I was having trouble getting some clean condition articles for reference points. So he thought he would send me a little care package, which I'm very appreciative of. If you've got stuff like this laying around your house that you don't want, I will gladly take it because it's going to look great in the museum one day. And he even sent me a letter. Apparently, back in the mid 2000s, he was working for Gibson as a product specialist, where he would go to all the Gibson dealers in Spain and Portugal to explain stuff to people and maintained and repaired some of the guitars they had in stock. And he shared with me a really fun tale about a Eric Clapton Crossroads 335. He only showed me a few things that he was sending me, but this is like an actual folder of information. So this looks, you know, 2000s-ish to me. Got one of these Gibson Pier booklets. I don't think I've ever seen one of these. Is it one of the Pee Wee Les Pauls? We talked about that. One of the DC Les Pauls. Oh, cool! A Platinum! And a Smartwood! I love this era of Gibson, it's so much fun. Uh, Arctic White Les Paul Studio, still having the ebony fretboard. These are just some really good photos. Original Les Paul Supreme, Joan Jett Melody Maker. I wonder if this is before or after they did it. And nice! The Explorer Pro in a promo pamphlet. That's cool. This might be helpful. I'm gonna hold that back, we'll talk about it another day. This is the only thing he really told me he was sending me, some product pages. So Chet Atkins models, L series. It's that doofy Americana series I never knew anything about until they showed up in the demo shop. Pete Townsend. Apparently there was a Brent Mason before the Brent Mason. The older modern Gibson amps. But there we go, the episode that started it all. But it's cool to have the Supreme, the Smartwoods, the studios of the time. Wasn't ever a big fan of the Fireball finish, but whatever. That's incredibly cool. You can occasionally get really good deals on these Firebird 7s from the mid-2000s. The original SG Supreme. Is that on the back? No! Cool! This is the one that's got all the colors. I've always loved the natural burst. But apparently those were called Emerald Burst, Midnight Burst, and Trans Black. I really need to get one of these again. For my own collection, I would prefer this blue mist one. The Les Paul Studio Baritones. These things need to come back into production. The ES-137 and the Classic DC and Faded series. The ones with the crescent moons. Then we have an Epiphone pamphlet. Another one from 2006. Ooh, 2006 Gibson Custom. Shaping a neck tenon. That's just pretty much a complete little catalog here. I love stuff like this. You have to really take time to sit down with it. That's why with like my private tour museum things that I'm doing now, I mean, you can sit down with the stuff I have and just look at it. But it's just fun to look back because it's easy to forget about some models. Or maybe you learn something new about a guitar that you never realized before. Or find a model that you fall in love with, like the SG Elegance. Or the Pat Martino signature with the weird headstock. And this other one appears to be about the amplifiers. So thank you so much, Manu. That's some great stuff that I'll look at more in depth a little bit later. And now let's see what's in this FedEx. It appears to be some sort of a fancy box. <laughs> Did I order a present for my wife? Nope, looks like a set of tuners. But not just any tuner set, it's the cool flip out winding ones. The last time I got a set of these in, they only lasted like 20 minutes on the market. But I remember buying these a couple of months ago. I found it was interesting that they had the whole made in Germany right here on the backside. This is actually a late 90s, early 2000s version of this tuner that they would occasionally use on some high-end archtop models. So not exactly the same as the 70s or 80s, but they look nearly identical outside of looking at the back. So I thought it'd be fun to check them out real quick. You can let me know if you're interested. Otherwise, I'll keep them in my parts drawer because that is fantastic set, nice and gold everywhere. But now we have two priority mailboxes. First one being a, a new old stock box. With absolutely nothing in it, but don't worry, you can check out this episode where we unboxed a whole bunch of new old stock parts. Oh, wait a minute. No, there is stuff in here. One. One, I wonder. Oh, wait, no. Thank goodness they are just in the original packaging. They fell out. <laughs> that is the downside to the original aftermarket box. They just don't hold them into place. But if you ever want to know if somebody put aftermarket tips on them, you have to remember these ones are plastic. The Gibson supplied aftermarket ones. So if you're always wondering, hey, what kind of crank tuner do I have? It's got the plastic buttons. You've got the replacement tips style. So if you're interested in putting these on your guitar, you can feel free to let me know. But in my opinion, this version is way inferior to the actual one. And our next package was another gift from Dan. So I get asked this question a lot. How do I attach this thing to a guitar in the circuit? 
The key is you get yourself some alligator clips to attach to your multimeter and you get yourself a smaller patch lead, you know, just something that'll fit on your desk and you just attach it like so, one to the grounding and then one to the tip and then you're good to go. You just plug that into your guitar and you're good. Now, some of the people that are in the know, they go, hey, Trogly, I can make you custom tips where these will just plug into the multimeter and then you can just insert it. So thank you, Dan. But I did have to tell him, I have emotional attachment to these giant ones because they were a birthday gift from my sister many years ago. I couldn't promise him I would use it for like every episode, but I can at least give him his time to shine here. I think there could be a niche market for a product like this. And this certainly takes up way less space on my workbench. So we'll give it a try next review. Thank you, because it does seem to work as intended but maybe just a little bit too short on the lead length because that sticks out so far. I think maybe an L angle jack could work better, but then that would limit what guitars you could actually put it on. But cool little invention. And then there was one. This one showed up on my doorstep a couple of days ago and uh, it came from like a music shop that I don't remember ordering anything from. So it could be an unsolicited gift or who knows. Oh, no. No, this isn't that. Okay. Giant box was throwing me off. This thing came here fast. Wow. I just ordered that like the night before. This is a Steinberger jam trem system. What on earth do I need one of these things for? You're just going to have to find out in a couple of weeks when that guitar finally gets here because I had to buy this whole new old stock system just to get this trem bar. I suppose having a spare weird trem system for parts won't hurt me at all. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of our unboxing fun. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.